Hey babe, it's noon and I have a cake in the mail. I gotta go. Okay, I'll walk you out. I missed you too, babe. take a swim in the lake out back. Okay, have fun. Olivia? Nine one one, nine one one. My girlfriend's been stabbed. Yes, yes, I'm at, I'm at 206 Edward Circle. I just, I, I came back and she, she was dead. What happened here? I don't know, man. I was I went swimming in the lake for like 20 minutes and I come back and she's she's dead. She's dead? I can't. What, what, what happened? What, what, where, where, what happened? Where were you? I was at the lake. Where were you? I was over in my house and I heard commotion and I came over and I can't. What's going on here? I mean, this is this is my my nephew's girlfriend. You're Chase's uncle. All right, secure the scene and uh, separate the witnesses. When the forensic team gets here, make sure they scan and take pictures of the scene. We have you on record saying that you went swimming in the lake at the time of the murder. Yes, sir. Uh, what time was that? 1.15. And how long did you go swimming for? 20 minutes. Uh, it's, it's my nephew's girlfriend. Oh, okay. Um, nephew's girlfriend. All right, um, and have you spoken to your nephew today? No, no, I've spoken to him for four days. Four days. Okay, and uh, just one last question. Do you know uh, what kind of car your nephew drives? Yes, he has a, a new Audi. White one. Okay, thank you. His wallet. Uh, while searching for evidence, we found a knife by the shore of the lake. All right, let's get this secured and packaged and we can send it to the lab for crime scene analysis. I've located this handwritten letter addressed to the victim and signed by her secret lover. Let's hand this off to the graphology department. They deal with handwriting. We found some tire tracks out back by the dirt road. The tire tracks helped break the Levinsky case wide open in 08, so it might be worth checking out. All right, we'll get on that. Thank you. Yeah. Have you been able to identify the transient evidence yet? Yes, we were able to make an impression of the tire tracks you found before they were changed or lost. Mm -hmm. They match the supposed model of the vehicle the boyfriend drives. Okay, great. Um, we're going to get you a warrant for the search of the car. Awesome, okay. thank you. So we just received word from the medical examiner that this knife was indeed the murder weapon. He also determined that the time of death was between 1.10 and 1.30, but the boyfriend didn't call until 2.15. That's a lot of time for not reporting a crime. 
Now that we have all of the suspect's fingerprints, let's compare them with the prints we found on the knife. Okay, so I found nine similarities of the minutia between one of the prints on the knife and the boyfriend, and 12 similarities of the other print that matched the uncle. That's physical evidence that the boyfriend was present at the scene. It seems out of the three main fingerprint characteristics, he possesses the tented arch pattern. Only 1% of the population has that pattern. Interesting. Did the boyfriend say he was present at the scene? No. So then why would the uncle's prints be on the knife? Here's a copy of the letter from the secret lover addressed to the victim that you wanted to see. The actual letter is currently being analyzed by a specialist against Mr. Burley's actual handwriting. Uh, that's what we got. Thank you. Why don't you read it? Dearest Olivia, you will soon be free from his confining grasp. He is too controlling of you. He doesn't love you like I do. He doesn't deserve you. I will release you from him. You will soon be free. Yours until the end, Brady. This is the vehicle, the victim's boyfriend, Chase. I'm going to use the luminol test to detect if there's any blood that he may have tried to clean off. So there seems to be blood on the wheel and I'm going to have you dust for fingerprints. I also noticed a few strands of hair wrapped around the gear stick. Let's get that sent to the lab and I can analyze the roots for DNA. So I determined that the blood stain is type O negative. There is no A, B or RH antigen present. This is the same blood type of the victim, Olivia. And obviously the fingerprints we found on the steering wheel are the same fingerprints belonging to the boyfriend that we also found on the knife. I've been able to extract nuclear DNA from the root and the shaft contained abundant mitochondrial DNA. By comparing the samples of the DNA from the rest of her body, I've determined that this is Olivia's hair. Human roots look different based on whether or not they've been forcibly removed or if they've fallen out and these have clearly been yanked out of her head. It doesn't have a round circular shape, but it's broken and frayed. So we're confident that the boyfriend had remnants of Olivia's hair and blood on his hands. Yes, but how can we explain the neighbor and uncle of the boyfriend Chester's fingerprints on the knife as well? Results from the serious letter have come back from the graphology department. It's an exact match to Mr. Brady's handwriting. Why would he write such a threatening letter to a girl he was so in love with? I'll leave you guys to solve this. Best of luck. Officers, we've pieced together this crime slowly and carefully working through all of the evidence and are ready to present to you who we believe committed this horrible crime. It starts in the early afternoon when Olivia and her boyfriend, Chase, are eating breakfast together, and she leaves for what she says is a 12.30 nail appointment. Instead, she arrives to the house of her secret boyfriend, Brady. Brady's next-door neighbor, Chester, happens to be the uncle of Olivia's public boyfriend, Chase. He calls Chase at approximately 12.35 to inform him of her disloyal affair. Olivia tans by the pool as Brady goes for a swim in the nearby lake. It is at this moment, around 1.15 p.m., when our killer murders Olivia. Starting with Brady, he only went for a swim for 20 minutes, however, waited 45 minutes to call the police. After extensive interviewing with health analysis, it was determined he actually passed out upon seeing Olivia's dead body. Waking up confused and disoriented, he then called 911. So what about the creepy letter? It fell out of his pocket when he fainted. He explained to us how much he and Olivia loved poetry and she was planning on breaking up with Chase in the coming week. He thought writing a passionate letter would encourage Olivia to end it soon. He had no true motive to kill her. But now, the murder weapon. Found washed up on the lake at 3 p.m. Brady and Chester began fighting when Brady accused Chester of murdering Olivia, as he was the only person around. And after analysis of the individual evidence of fingerprints, we matched Chester's to those on the knife. Why? Because the knife came from the kitchen set in Chester's house, a house that another family member had a key to, his nephew, Chase. After Chase received the call from his uncle, he raced to the house. Knowing his uncle would be outside tanning, he let himself in around 1 p.m., stole a knife from the kitchen, and made his way into Brady's backyard, 
when he approached Olivia and stabbed her to death. He chucked the knife as far as he could, barely making its way into the lake. Chase rushed to his car, leaving tire tracks in a dirt road, and drove away with blood on his hands.